Okay, so we have a mixed cardio rheumatology question here. It's like, ooh, wow, interesting combination, right? This x-ray immediately grabs our attention. We can see it's rheumatoid arthritis. There's some bout de nerf deformities there. No idea how to fucking pronounce that word. I'm not French. Relax. And there's also some ulnar deviation, it seems. So we notice this x-ray. We start reading the question. She's 46, and she's got sharp chest pain for the past 24 hours, exacerbated by deep breathing. Now, truthfully, now I'm the one who wrote this question. But if I read this first sentence in isolation, that truthfully sounds like costochondritis. And that's very high yield for USMLE. This is not costochondritis, but I'm just making a point that this first sentence, that should be a differential, at least in our minds when we're reading this question. It's all over the NBME exams, uh, positional chest pain, okay? So a woman gets chest pain that's worse when she reaches above her head, behind her back. That's classic for costochondritis. So uh, with deep breathing, that could be costochondritis. So it's just a differential, and we make note that she has RA. Second sentence, she walks into the room bent over at the waist. It's like, oh, wow, okay. Now that is classic for pericarditis. Now that makes sense, right? Because pericarditis is worse when the patient leans back, better when the patient leans forward, okay? So a uh, classic descriptor is patient walking into the physician's office bent over at the waist. Current medications include naproxen, prednisone, prescribed to her by a rheumatologist. The importance of this sentence is just reinforcing that she has RA, okay, in case you didn't already grab it from the x-ray, which was obvious anyway. Um, I don't want to get too tangential, but I'm just going to quickly mention something about RA because it's so high yield, is that when we manage it, the symptoms only, there's two arms of management. There's symptoms only, which is NSAIDs followed by prednisone, but the management of NSAIDs and steroids do not slow disease progression, okay? Symptoms only. That's how this woman's being managed. And then we have the DMARD arm, disease-modifying antiromatic drugs, which do slow disease progression. Almost always methotrexate first, followed by TNF-alpha drugs, okay? Not the focus of this question, but I just want to quickly mention that because of its yieldness. Now, she's got a blood pressure of 120 on 80 when sitting. This decreases to 112 and 76 during inhalation. Now, the process, the physiologic process of blood pressure decreasing with inhalation is called pulses paradoxus, okay? Now, pulses paradoxus becomes relevant for USMLE when, it's, when the drop during inhalation is greater than 10 millimeters of mercury, okay? But I should make it clear that it's not called pulses paradoxus only after blood pressure drops more than 10 millimeters of mercury with inhalation. It's pulses paradoxus any, to any degree. And I say this because I've seen this in NBME questions where they'll say the pulses paradoxus is less than 10 millimeters of mercury. You're like, hmm, what the fuck? You're like, I thought pulses paradoxus was, was when it was greater than 10 millimeters of mercury. So you learn that uh, it just refers to the blood pressure drop with inhalation. Now, why does this happen? It's because during inhalation, diaphragm moves down, decreased intrathoracic pressure, increased venous return to the right heart, increased uh, right atrial filling, simultaneously uh, increased pulmonary, uh, increased compliance to the pulmonary vasculature. Uh, so that leads to a transient pooling of the blood in the pulmonary vasculature, decreased left heart emptying. Okay, so systolic blood pressure decreases slightly during inhalation. If the pulse's paradoxus is greater than 10 millimeters of mercury, this is classic for cardiac tamponade, okay? Which is when we have an acute accumulation of blood around the, usually blood around the pericardial sac, uh, classically due to a stab wound to the chest, can be uh, e.g. left ventricular free wall rupture post MI. Uh, but uh, cardiac tamponade will be a pericardial effusion plus Beck triad, okay? So JVD, muffled heart sounds, hypotension, and you'll have a pulses paradoxus greater than 10 millimeters of mercury drop with inspiration. Yes, okay, there's some students who are gonna be pedantic right now and say, what about severe asthma, et cetera? It's true, but for the point of US simile, it's usually cardiac tamponade. And so the, the translation of this finding in the vignette means diagnosis, is not cardiac tamponade, okay? And we've already uh, established in our minds that pericarditis is likely based on the fact this patient's bent over at the waist. Now, how does it relate to the rheumatoid arthritis? And this is the value point. RA can cause pericarditis, okay? Autoimmune diseases are associated with an increased propensity 
for phenomena such as pericarditis. Okay, so RA can cause pericarditis, RA can cause pulmonary fibrosis called rheumatoid lung. I made a prior question on that, but that's an interesting point just for this moment. If you didn't know that already, that you're like, oh, wow, like RA can cause pericarditis. Yeah. Okay. It might sound weird at first, but it can just as an autoimmune disease cause inflammation of the pericardial sac. So we look at the answer choices. Choice A, electrical alternates, Wrong fucking answer. That refers to fluid around the heart, okay? So pericardial effusion, cardiac tamponade. A cardiac tamponade is just a pericardial effusion plus Beck triad, as I said before, okay? Hypotension, muffled heart sounds, JVD. Uh, but in both cases, whether you have a simple pericardial effusion or a tamponade, you would get electrical alternates when the fluid is moving over the heart. Uh, the distance between the leads uh, will change. The electrical activity in the heart and the leads will change, will fluctuate. That's why we get electrical alternates, okay? Uh, choice B refers to, uh, or so irregular, ir irregularly irregular rhythm is atrial fibrillation, okay? Of course, that's not our answer here. So atrial fib uh, could be seen in, in thyroid disorders like hyperthyroidism, okay? Uh, so we'd have absent P waves, irregularly irregular RR intervals. Uh, choice C, no abnormalities. That would be the correct answer for costochondritis, okay? So that was like a mini, not super complicated, it's not hard, but that's a mini like challenge in this question where it's like, oh, okay, like this is not costochondritis, but no abnormalities in costochondritis, okay? Choice D, ST segment elevations, two, three AVF, those are the inferior leads. If you have ST segment elevation in three, four contiguous leads, uh, that is consistent with an MI, okay? Why 2-3 AVF for an inferior infarct? Doesn't matter, I could have written V4, V5, V6 for a, a left lateral infarct, um, but the point is it's not an MI. And then we look at choice E, ST segment, ST segment elevations diffuse. That is correct for pericarditis, so diffuse ST segment elevations. If you ever get an ECG, you'll see the ST segments are elevated, not just in three contiguous leads, but literally in like most of the leads. And you're like, what the fuck's going on here? That's just pericarditis, okay? I almost thought about being a little bit trickier by having the correct answer be PR segment depression, which is a more specific finding, actually, for pericarditis. But the reason I, didn't, I chose not to do that is because the point is to get you a higher score in the U.S. Amelia. And although it's an interesting talking point to be like, oh, wow, like pericarditis, more specific finding is actually PR depression. USMLE, I have not seen that on any NBME material to this point, but the ST segment elevations, the diffuse ST segment elevations, very, very high yield. That's what you need to know, okay? Not some weird factoid about PR segment depression, okay? But you can see that in uh, pericarditis as well. So that's it for this question, all right? We can obviously uh, do a much more lengthy discussion on things. I'm gonna make more content uh, as I'm doing here. So if you liked this video, Subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.